Greetings, the Astro 30 here, yet again with what I hope to be another repair service video for you. On the desk in front of me is a NAD stereo receiver, a 7225PE, power envelope they call it, whatever that is. And it's got a problem, I don't know too much about it except it doesn't do anything, was what I was told. So. I've got the dim bulb sitting on the desk there, so what I'll do is I'll plug it in and we'll turn it on and see what happens. Alright, dim bulb's hooked up, turned on. Yeah, well, that's not a good sign. As the dim bulb was glowing almost full brightness, something is either shorter or drawing too much current. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull the lid off. Whatever happened to bloody screw that went through here hmm all the screws out of the cover are completely different they're not the same someone has been inside this thing before and lost most of the screws not a good sign mismatched screws wrong screws and missing screws someone has definitely been fiddling with this yeah. There's a look at the inside. It's a TO3 transistor output stage and a bunch of old style electronics here. This, according to the service manual, which I have actually found, um, is around about 1991. There's a bunch of fuses here which come off the secondary windings of the main transformer, so I'm just going to test them with continuity tester. That one's fine. That one's fine. That one's blown. That one is also blown. Um, according to the service manual, there's a switch on the back of the unit to select uh, between 4 ohm and 8 ohm impedance output. And all that does is, in 8 ohm, it brings these two fuses and an extra set of secondary windings into the power supply to the power amps just to give it a bit more current, maybe a little bit more voltage. Um, these two here are always connected, uh, even in 4 or 8. So having two blown fuses here is not really a problem at this stage, although they will be ne needed to be replaced. Next thing I want to do is I want to check for a shorted output stage. Now, these TO3 transistors here the can is the collector, and because I can't get to the base or emitter junctions because they're on the other side, uh, what I can do is, because there's no like DC protection relay in here, and this is a emitter follower amplifier, so the emitters go to the output posts, and each collector goes to a supply rail. So if I start with that channel, nothing, nothing. Nothing and nothing. Move to the other channel. Nothing. Shorted. Shorted. And nothing. Hmm. So these are 2N3055 and MJ2955 respectively. And the two PMPs are here. And these are the ones that are showing up short. Now that means one of these has a short between collector and emitter. It wouldn't be both because there was no short on the other channel. So, next thing I want to do is this has a removable bottom. So I can get to the underside of this PCB here without having to take the whole thing apart, which is good. Um, so I'll do that and uh, we'll take a couple of measurements. There's missing screws on the bottom too. Nice. So looking at the bottom of the main PCB here, there's nothing glaringly obvious, um, like bad solder joint wise. Well, some of them look a little bit sus, but the transistors live here. And that one is either covered in a load of flux, or it's not soldered properly. No, it's just a load of flux. Alright. Okay, so in diode mode, uh, the shorter side of the TO3 
when you look at it from the bottom, it goes base emitter. So I think this was the MPN. That's the collector. I want the base, not the collector. That one's fine. That one's fine. This is the PMP. That junction's fine. Well, that junction appears to be fine. Okay, this one. Fine. Fine. Okay. And as for this one. Fine. Fine. Hmm. However, these collectors are definitely shorted to the right output channel post. Well, which is shorter to the negative rail. Um, next question is, why? I believe I've found that this PMP transistor is shorted between the emitter and collector. So, that would be the problematic transistor, I reckon. Because if you look at the meter, when I check the emitter-collector junction, in diode mode, dead short. Um, the other way as well, dead short. However, this transistor, the companion in the other channel, is fine. As you can see, the voltage just climbs. Right, so this transistor needs to come out, and I'll take the MPN out of circuit as well so the output stage is completely disconnected and see if the short on the output goes away. With the two transistors removed on the left hand channel this is a convenient place to go. Short is gone. Isn't that amazing? No short. So I'm going to say that well, we've made a difference. So I'm going to verify that. Oh, big difference. It actually turns on. Well, look at that. 92.9. That's the uh, FM radio station. So next I need to find out what sort of voltage we've got on the remaining working channel, as in DC offset. So... We've got about 2.25 volts there. And nothing on that channel. But this channel's open. That was the one that was shorted. So we can ignore that channel. But we will look at this channel. Alright, I've got the dummy load hooked up to the left hand channel in 8 ohms. I mean, it's supposed to be 4, but 8 ohms is fine. Just for this test. And I've got a signal going into the CD input, so we'll just make sure that this is set to around 600 millivolts, peak to peak, which it is, and I'll turn the amplifier on and increase the volume control. And look at that, we've got a signal. So that channel is working, by the looks of things. So that means that that channel should output some sound. Uh, before I replace the output transistors on this side, well, one of them anyway, because, uh, well, the printing is missing on these transistors now. They don't look very healthy, so should really replace both. Uh, but I will check all the other transistors in that section just to make sure that, you know, there are none that are shorted. And uh, then just replace the output stage and then rebias it and it should be done. Alright, let me hook up a speaker now. Okay, speaker hooked up. Nothing unusual. There it goes. Nice, we've got sound. So I'll change the frequency. Maybe sometime today.
Okay, it's working. And a short time later, I've been to JCAR and I've got two new transistors. It's always better to replace them in pairs, plus the printing on the um, other MPN transistor is no longer existent. And two new 4 amp fast blows fuses. I've checked all the other transistors in this particular power amp side and compared it with the transistors on the other side, they all test the same. So, I'm pretty confident that putting the new transistors in will fix the problem. So, that's what I'm going to do now. But I'm going to clean up all this old heatsink compound off the micro washers, etc. and reapply some new stuff. With the applet stage replaced, and as messy as all that heatsink uh, compound stuff is, yeah, it'd be a good idea now to check that the transistors are actually isolated from the heatsink or else bad things will happen. So I'll just touch the screw. That one's isolated. That one's isolated. They should be isolated from each other, which they are. Excellent. We also should not have a short circuit on the output, which we don't. Good. Right, now to power it up and see what happens. On the dim bulb, of course, because I've made a change. Um, I still haven't put the two new fuses in yet. It's not kind of relevant at this stage. Oh, excellent. Look at that. No glow at all. All right, let's see what the DC offset on the output is. Helps to press record. Okay, I'll check the right-hand channel DC offset. Uh... It's about 12, 11 millivolts, something like that. That's not too bad. And the working left-hand channel, more like 5. So there is a bit of a DC offset there. But it's it's not that much, really. So now I guess it's time to load it. Amplifier is loaded. Give it some longer. Uh, yeah, okay, that doesn't look very healthy, does it? That looks not right, but it could be under-biased too. So I think it might be a good idea to bias the output stage. Right, the service manual says the first thing to do is just the DC level on the output with this potentiometer, which you can't see here. In this case, it's R412. We need to get a roughly zero volts or thereabouts yeah well that adjusts the halfway voltage point of the amplifier so I'll try and get it close to zero which is fiddly but it said plus minus 30 volts thereabouts, or oh, 30 millivolts, I should say. That's about as close as I can get it. Now I'll check the left hand channel. So I'm just going to switch my millimeter over to that channel. That's pretty good, pretty close. That's about it. Now with the multimeter across the two test points near the heatsink here, we need to adjust the voltage on the multimeter with the pot just next to the clip leads here to 28 millivolts roughly. Okay, it seems to be jumping around a bit. I can't really get a stable reading. Might be better to look at it on the oscilloscope. Still looks like shit. Okay, well that's not making much difference to the signal. Hmm. Well, this is perplexing. I've spent the last two hours going through this and I cannot find what the issue is. I've changed a couple of transistors here in the 
constant current source for the uh, VBE multiplier. And on this particular VBE multiplier transistor, I'm getting minus 14 volt on all three pins with respect to ground. However, on the working channel, and this is how it's supposed to work, I've got about one volt on the base, one volt on the collector, and minus one volt on the emitter, which is how it's supposed to be. So what's causing the 14 odd volt at the VBE multiplier, which is also at the bases of both of these output transistors, which is a minus 14 volt, However, the output voltage on the emitters is oh, no higher than about seven millivolts. So, yeah, this is this is this is confusing me as to where this 14 volt is coming from, or well, minus 14 volt in this case. Also, currently it doesn't like being plugged directly into the wall because as soon as you do, there's an arcing sound coming from the transformer. And um, yeah, I turned it off after that point. Uh, however, there's not that much current draw on the dim bulb, so you tell me. Uh, we could have a faulty transformer, or it is possible. Uh, well, the problem with that is not so much of an issue because, well, I could remove these fuses, and that disconnects the secondaries, and that could be a valid test to do too, to see if the noise is still there. But I think it's because of the imbalance of the voltage on the power amplifier on the left hand channel is it the left hand channel? no sorry the right hand channel compared to its counterpart the left well yeah I don't know and that could be a problem well it is a problem finding it's also a problem so did I say the left channel before? I meant the right channel this one controls the right which comes out that output there the left's over that side um, it seems to me that something is short circuit for us to have that minus 14 volt um, there plus the transformer carries on uh, but there's no shorter transistor hmm okay all right so this is the schematic and this is the channel in question all the voltages around parts in the circuit here match with what's up here um, until I get to the emitter junction of Q408, which is a BD139, which I've changed, and Q406, which is a BC556B, which I've also changed. That's actually the vast voltage amplifier stage, not constant current source, my correction. And then we have negative 14 volt here, negative 13 roughly there, negative 14 there on the VBE multiplier and of course negative 14 there and negative 14 there there should be like 0.6 of a volt there and minus 0.6 of a volt there same is also true here there's minus 14 volt there minus 14 volt there well it makes sense because the VBE multiplier is connected to those two points so up until this part of the circuit, everything checks out. From this point on, something is not right. And at this stage, I don't know what. There's two supplies. There's a minus 41 volt here and a minus 28. Both those supplies are there, but it's down because it's going through the dim bulb, which makes sense. But yeah, um, I can't find the problem and I really am kind of stuck at this point so if anyone's got any suggestions out there of where I can go uh, please leave a comment below however I'm going to leave this video here because um, I've spent way too much time on this now and I don't want to do anything to it now anymore so Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. This is the Astro Thea saying, see ya, have a great day. I'm probably going to end up married to this thing too.